<laughs> Let me, um, sorry, sorry chat. I am going to respect my commitment to 4 p.m. and pause this run for a sec so I can chat with Andre Fluellen. Let me get you on, sorry, uh, sorry chat. Let me get you on screen. Um, chat, if you have audio requests, if I should turn up Fluellen or or whatever, please let me know so I can do that. Yeah. How's your weekend going? Man, you know what? It's been a phen fantastic weekend. Like, you know, it's Father's Day, stuff like that coming up. I'm a dad of two little girls. So my wife surprised me and took me to the absolute boondocks mountains of jo of Appalachian, Georgia for a trip. So I am like way up in the Appalachian mountains right now. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited, super excited. Okay. So, for those of you who don't know, today we are raising money for Goody Nation. Goody Nation's a charity that started with some black entrepreneurs who, my understanding is it was sort of like a social group, and they were giving each other some support offline and stuff like that, and then it grew into like, oh, what if we run a charity event, we'll do a 10-hour hackathon to solve some tech issues for some startups, and they did that, and then did more and more and more, and that's sort of... The thing that they do is um, they're, a, they're a nonprofit about enabling other people to do really good things in the world when someone has a vision, but they need a little bit of help to get off the ground, Goody Nation steps in, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, Goody Nation, awesome nonprofit. Uh, been working with them for probably about, she's close to a year now, just doing, uh, just doing some work and some mentoring with some of their startup founders. And all that, and so it's really cool, you know, just helping the underrepresented founders just get the funding or get the resources or just get the exposure that they need. So it's a pretty, pretty freaking awesome. It's a really sweet charity. It like it works really well with how I try to do things on this channel with charity as well. We're all about empowering people. I very much believe that there are a huge number of people who can do so much good in the world who don't get to because right. they don't have the privileges that I've gotten to have in my life or or something just isn't quite there for them yet. And so charities that help with mental health for people who need help with that, charities that just help with like food for people who need food, like how right. are you going to start changing the world if you're worrying about getting your next meal, you know? And and exactly. Goody Nation as well. Sounds great. Um, so one of the donation incentives I saw was we're a strategy gaming channel and the NFL, it's like there's a strategy game element to football. You know, there's the play, you line up in certain positions and everything. Um, wide receivers have their routes or whatever. So <laughs> for for three thousand dollars raised, which we, we have passed, uh I said that I would pitch an NFL play to you. Um and you're an NFL analyst, so I figure if it's good, maybe we can get this run in the NFL. Yeah. All right. What you... All right, I like it. I like it. We'll try it for sure. So, so I did make a paint document showing showing the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure I can actually show this to you right now, though. But the idea, this is called the dig option play because we like. I I don't know. The cult of my channel is about digging for some reason. <laughs> okay. The, the idea is, it's a punt run or pass a punt run or pass it's a punt run or pass we play this on third down not on fourth okay. down so it's like a third and 12 situation at our own 30 or something like okay. this and it's like it's pretty unlikely we hit the first down and even if we do we're not going to be in like scoring position or anything okay okay so we set up to maybe be able to punt if we punt, we can get really good field position on the opposing team's starting drive. We can maybe pin okay. them inside their 20, go for safety or something like that. And just because we have the potential to punt, all of a sudden they have to respect that. They have to like put a punt return guy back and, and stuff like that. So that's cool. Okay. 
But we have our QB on the field still. We're going to have wide receivers run slants, try to end the route around about the 12, 12 yards advantage mark. Got a tight end on the field to run an out. Um, and we also have a running back to try to run in behind the tight end in, in some situations. I have the arrows, but I feel like I've explained it perfectly. You should, you could probably take this to a team and just get it run tomorrow, right? Like it. Right. You know what? All right. So the only question I would have, this is the only one, because honestly, this needs to be run. This needs to be in every playbook. Like I, I probably should take it to Bill Bel Belichick <laughs> probably tomorrow. I could probably get it now that you know because nobody's actually in the building so i could probably get them on uh, on zoom or something like that incredible so, all right so we're taking we're taking this to belichick the only question that he's going to ask me is what is your field position on this play what is my field position but field because field position is going to be key because at certain parts of the field they may not need a punt returner true because they they may feel like it's either too close to the end zone or if it's too far away, they'll just put some, you know, they'll just keep a safety back there. So you need to know what field position. That's the only thing that Bill Belichick is going to come back to me and say before he puts it in the playbook. I think our own 30 yard line. Ooh, okay. That's You're where good. we run it. You're good there. You got, yeah, you got it there. I actually like to play because as a defensive lineman, you think about the line. Okay. So the defensive line, has to kind of hold up. Well, oh, here's the only thing, though. Okay, all right. Another issue. You have offensive linemen on the field, so they're not going to respect the actual punt team. That's the only issue. That's another issue. Ooh, so you got our, is like the offensive line worse at hunting down a punt return? Is that the problem? Abs absolutely. You, gotcha. So, I don't know, uh, so gamers, do you do you remember this? And like four or five years ago, if you were football, you know, watchers. Do you remember the kick six when Alabama beat Auburn? I know what play you're because, talking about. Exactly. And that was to go to the national championship game, which they lost to Florida State, right? I'm Auburn modern. But the kick six, they ran it back because they had offensive linemen on the field. So that's the only issue, too. All right. So it's a risky <laughs> play. So this is a Very play risky. that we run. Hmm. This is a play that we run with like six minutes left in the fourth quarter okay. when we're yes. down a touchdown. Because yes. like, yes. we sort of have to gamble at that point anyway. You there you go. Okay, perfect. I like it. It's a great play for that because I do have to watch out for, for punt or, you know, those, uh, those, those slants. The slants are always killer on third and 12. That's a perfect route. So, hmm. more than likely not run though. So I'm not, we're not worried about running. That's true. It would have to be like some sort of draw type run where oh, like the running too, backs though. blocking okay. for the QB and maybe it's a handoff. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Draw. No, draw is good. I've seen a third and eight, third and nine draw. So uh, Minnesota Vikings with Adrian Peterson used to run draws on third and nine, third and 10 all the time. So you got something there. You got something. You got, George, you got something. <laughs> right. <I like> it. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. I love the strategy aspect of football. There's so yes. much, so much that goes into setting up these very specific routes and blocking strategies and just the stuff with the offensive line for setting up a run, like where are you going to build the gap sort of thing is really fascinating. Right. It's all, it's yeah. all super cool. Yeah, absolutely. So strategy wise, so I think about, uh, you know, obviously games right now, you know, especially the games that you play are strictly strategy right like for the for the most part like yeah actually most, pretty much exclusively most, yeah you know most serious games right now is a lot a lot of strategy involved so when i think about strategy in football and i think about strategy in game all right so for anybody out there who's listening right now i'm going to immediately improve your gaming skills probably by 20 to 25 percent right now this one statement okay all right even yours you ready for it you yeah ready? i would love okay. i would love to be better Okay, so immediate strategy. Here's the, one of the strategies that I learned in the NFL that took me from being like a pretty good player to being a freaking pretty doggone good player. Like to, I would say a 10, 15% increase was the strategy of understanding how to picture myself successful and dominating before I ever stepped on the field. Mental hacks. So that's the first strategy. Any great player that you ever see like Tom Brady or Indomitian Sue or like any of the greats, uh, 
Aaron Donald, right, who's really who's been balling lately. Um, any of the greats, they'll they'll tell you their first thing that they train is right here. They picture themselves winning, visualization, all that before they step on the field. They said they all say it's their most important, their most important aspect. Serena Williams does it all the time. You ever see her when she has her eyes closed on the court? That's what she's doing. So oh. in, seriously, immediately. Ben. So so if you want to be uh step your gaming game up, you gotta picture yourself dominating and, and picture the strategies already in your mind first before you even turn the game on. Definitely works in the strategy games. If you try to do a strategy and it won't win anyway, like what was the point? You have to you, you have to be playing the strategy that can win for you. Even if there things go. are going bad, like you got to right. picture how are you going to come back? There you go. Exactly. Well, you know, the, your, your mind is the only place you can practice perfectly without any kind of like uh, setbacks or drawbacks or anything like that. So that's the first strategy that I always implement and I tell people to implement is the mental hacks. I'm always I'm all about mental hacks. That's rad. Yeah, we've been talking a little bit about like meditation and stuff like that today. And it's it's. You need maybe like a football field or a athletic facility or something to train your body, but for your mind, you can like sit on the floor and close your eyes. Um, you can really work on that anywhere. Absolutely, anywhere, uh, and that's and that's what I do even till this day. Like uh, I learned some of the mental techniques from uh, probably going to be a, a Hall of Famer and Dominican Sue, who's a defensive tackle I played with, and uh, he he taught me how to visualize, meditate. Uh, he taught me all that, and so uh, I still do it to this day. There's so many things I can just I can tell tell people about about how just powerful this thing in here is uh, that can get you anywhere you want to be. But you know that's a whole another story for a whole another day. You know Al Pacino's speech in The Longest Yard? Oh yeah. Is like is that what the football locker room is like? Is there some person just telling you this incredibly immensely emotional speech? Do they like hire Al Pacino to come deliver it at halftime? <laughs> Uh, so all right, so that sometimes when there's not really a great speaker on the team, I've heard that speech played like over the, oh you know, the, the, the speakers, right? In the NFL or like college? No, this is this is in college. Okay, uh, but in every NFL team, there's always the guy who's a speaker, like who can give the most rah rah emotional, moving pregame speeches. Like uh, there's always that guy on every team, every single team, and it's usually not the superstar. So it's usually just a guy who just works hard and goes hard and it's just kind of your role player. It's usually that guy. It's never really the superstar. That's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes. Twitch chat asked this question earlier today, so I, I wanted to actually ask you for them. All right. What's that? Um, oh, the, the Al Pacino. Okay, speech okay, okay, question yeah. that we just did yeah, yeah, for, so for sure. all right tell me about beyond the game because you're you're this successful professional athlete you're analyzing football as well and you joined beyond the game because you wanted to do more than that so Correct. what's what's your drive to do more than that especially in the world today where like yeah. there's a pandemic going on yeah. the news is like you turn on the news and you just feel bad a lot of the time yeah. but but you're still waking up you're in the mountains you're having a great time you're uh and you're doing good things yeah man all right so i'll kind of tell you the backstory of beyond the game and then i'll kind of get to where we are today all right so I would say the conception of Beyond the Game. So we're a group of professional athletes and business executives that come together, what I say, to win in life as a team. That's kind of our goal. That's what I, that's our mantra that I say. And so, um, so anyway, so I remember, man, in 2013, I was playing with the Detroit Lions, um, and my locker was right next to – hold on, is that too loud? If that's too loud, I can go to another room. No, no, that was fine. Okay, that was fine. Okay, all right, cool. So – I was, I was right, my locker was right between Calvin Johnson, who's like one of the best receivers of all time, and Adama Kinsu, the dude who taught me all the mental hacks, right? And so, so check this out. So you're in the locker room, all right? So my locker's between these two guys. And every single day, I used to steal Calvin, Calvin Johnson's shower shoes to go take a shower. So every day, <laughs> he gets so mad at me, right? Because he has to take a shower with soggy shoes, okay? Every day. And uh, he's like, one day, he calls me Flu because my last name's Fluella. He was like, hey, Flu, dude. You gotta stop stealing my shower shoes. Like it, this, this is it. Like this is this is a wrap. Now this is Megatron, the, be the best receiver of all time. And so we're having an argument about shower shoes, and uh, and Dama Kinsu and some other guys are just laughing hysterically because we're getting into it. And um, and if for whatever reason it hit me this day, 
like, hold on, I'm having, I'm having an argument with like one of the most influential people on the planet about shower shoes. And he's my really good friend. And then I looked around the locker room, there's 53 other guys who are 53 of the most influential people on the planet. And then I said, hold on, we have a problem here. All this influence and all we do together as a team is play a game. Like, that's when I realized, like, hold on, something's wrong with this picture. <laughs> because I figured if we pulled our influence together, it'd be nothing we couldn't do. Like, it'd be a 100% chance of success with, like, anything that we did. Okay. So that was kind of the conception of Beyond the Game. Because I tried to get that done while I was playing. But, uh, you know, guys are playing football. It's just like playing a strategy game. Once you're in that game, you are focused on that game, right? Like, right, you yeah. know, and so to try to, to try to steal somebody's focus away from that, like it just it just didn't work. And that's cool. I'm glad it didn't work because uh, one thing that I realized that we were missing and a lot of athletes were missing was the fact that, you know, I've been playing in the NFL. I've been playing sports. You know, I've been playing football for 20 years. And then when I'm done playing, I retired in 2016. When I'm done, I'm expected to have this level of uh, – of success in business that's like equal to my NFL success, right? Which is really, really, if you think about it, I put 20 years of practice into doing one thing and I got to step into a new thing. Like, that's like me playing you in a game. Like you would destroy me, right? Like seriously, you have so many more hours just based on the hours than you have. Than you have. So, so then I thought about it, like instead of trying to compete with business executives, shoot, why not, why not collaborate? They want to be around us anyway. And so that was the birth of Beyond the Game, uh, honestly. So we are a group of athletes and business executives to come together to win and help other startups win. Like, that's pretty much what we are. And, um, you know, and I, I'll tell that story because I know, like, yeah, hey, it sounds good. You know, my NFL player played, you know, did awesome my career. Like, you know, I got cut 10 times over the course of my career. Um, dude, I got so much money and stuff stolen from me from when I got, when I got done playing, like, so much money. Like, I don't even want to tell you how much money I had stolen from me. And so, honestly, one of the things that we can all relate to, everybody has a pain story. Everybody. And so I use that pain of just trying to do some investments and, you know, not realizing that these investors were really, <laughs> they weren't really trying to help me. They were just trying to help my money out of my pocket, right? Like, sure. you know, these investments, that's what they were doing. I didn't know any better. So now that I've linked with these business executives, like, oh my God, like my... <laughs> My level of just knowledge in terms of investments and looking at startups is just is light years ahead of anything I could have ever had if I'd have kept that money. Sure. So, yeah, honestly, man, it all ends up working out. Like, you know, it's just I went through a whole lot of pain. I mean, it was yeah, it sucked post career. Like, I went through depression and all that kind of stuff. But it was yeah. the best best thing that could have happened to me. Absolute best thing that could have ever happened because now, like, I'm actually doing something good now, and I, I wouldn't have been if it wasn't for that. So that's that story beyond the game. That's so fascinating. That like it it mirrors how I how I changed my life when I left poker. I used to play online poker professionally and I was one of the better players in the world. And in April 2011, um the FBI like seized the online poker sites in the US and I couldn't play online poker in the US anymore. So that was a really tough time for me in my life and I like tried going overseas to play and didn't really enjoy it and so I started looking for other things to do. And it was really interesting to me always seeing there are all these other poker players and they're so smart at games and they have all this money because they're succeeding as poker players and they're just motivated, intelligent people. It was fascinating to me to watch what they did when they couldn't play poker anymore online. Like some of them went overseas to play poker. Some of them started playing at casinos. And a few of them, like they took their money and they were like, I'm gonna make a documentary about what this experience was. I'm going to start a nonprofit uh, about gambling. I'm going to start an investment company or, or something like that. And for me, it was like, I'm going to take my passion for gaming and turn it into a, a community where I can teach other people and make gaming collaborative. And yeah, that's one of, that's one of those like intangible things about a person almost for me and i've always wondered why some people are one way and some are another way but what do you do once you have you know you have so much what are you going to do with it are you going to get more are you going to give it away are you going to help other people like how do people decide i don't know i don't know man it's you know the one of the scariest questions man and first of all i didn't know that uh 
I didn't know that they shut you down like that, man. That's it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. It's so it's so similar than like the being in the NFL because you know my my last play, I was healthy enough to continue to play football, but uh, they said the league said that you, you know no team signed me again. Like it was just it was a wrap. Nothing I could do about it, right? So it's, it's so similar. But uh, you know one of the scariest things in life. You know, even scarier than being broke. Like, I really believe this. And, you know, there's people who've been on both sides of it. But scary, scarier than being broke is having everything and then having to ask this question, what's next? Like, that's scary. When there's nothing that you can't do, you've done everything, and you're like, what's next? You know, and it's just like that. And I really think that's what people get really, really messed up. Like, it's, it's one thing, like, to not have anything and be able to look up. But it's another thing to have everything and have nowhere to go. That is scary. That scares me. Right? And I think that's what a lot of people go through. Yeah. And it, it's like those are the people in power. Those are the people who need to be helping everybody else, right? So yeah. if you have to answer that question for yourself and you like get it wrong or can't answer it or something, like there was so much good that you could have done with a different answer to that question. Yeah, exactly. So. I don't know, man. It's just, uh, you know, people can, everybody, I just encourage everybody to whatever pain that you're going through or have been through, just use it, you know, like seriously, because every change takes pain. It's just everything. If you want to build muscles, it takes pain. All right. If you want to, you know, even studying, it takes some pain, like just every change takes pain. And so just use that pain. You know, that's, that's always what I tell people. So when you said that if you played a strategy game with me, I would beat you. Um, that led to the channel wondering if we played football against each other, who would win? <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, you're six foot three. Is that correct? Yeah, six uh, two, six three on a good day. Okay. Six two and three quarters. So, so I'm. I think. <laughs> I think Audrey would probably win. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. I still like the confidence that's in there, though. Like you couldn't just say. He would definitely win. Like, no, he, just, he couldn't do Is that. there, like, spirit how tall was Flutie. Doug Flutie? I think he was, like, 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, oh, my maybe. God. Okay. Who's the <laughs> who's the shortest successful quarterback in the NFL to your, like, oh. mind? Uh, all right, short. I mean, Drew Brees is pretty short, to be honest. Drew Brees is, like, 5'10 He's like five, ten or 5'11". Five, like, they okay. build him six, one. He's, he's not that. He's not that tall. Um... No, no, Flutie was kind of no. Sorry, Flutie was pretty short too. I'm I'm thinking of uh, somebody else. Um, but yeah, so Drew Brees, he's pretty short. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Obviously, Michael Vick was like five eleven or six feet. But I mean, okay. Michael Vick is Michael Vick. Is Michael Vick. Like, yes. Also, <laughs> yeah. unclear how his body moves in the way it does. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Michael Vick is Michael Vick, so we can't really compare him to anybody else that's ever walked the face of the earth, right? It's, uh, um, but yeah, I would say Drew would be a good one. Okay. Uh, probably, you know, top five quarterbacks of all time. He's 5'11", 5'10", something like that. So I'm 5'10". I'm left-handed, okay. which is sometimes an advantage. I think okay. if you took me back to when I was three years old and started me okay. on an intense training regimen for 25 years, okay. and that was just my life, and then we got on the football field together... Obviously, <laughs> I couldn't like block you, but I think I think there's a more than one percent chance that I could have been successful as a QB um, in the sort of game you were playing. Okay. But I think that's like that is probably the distance here. <laughs> it's a very, very, very far distance. Like twenty five yeah. years of training plus getting lucky plus having to play a yeah. different position. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, you know, even though he's saying that there's a one percent chance, you got to think think of the hypotheticals he's giving you right now. Right. So <laughs> he's telling you that he has to get into the uh, the the time machine, right, and go back 25 years. Okay, that's you know somebody might invent that one day. You can go faster than the speed of light. You can go back in time. Is that what they say, right? Something like that. All right. So you can do that. Okay, that's a possibility. Kinda, maybe, but not really. But it's a possibility. And then he can start playing football, left-handed quarterback. Okay, um, you know it's it, I, so you're telling me there's a chance. I'll give you, a, I'll give you a one percent chance. I'll All give right. you one percent. I'll take right. that. I'll give you one percent. Yeah, I'll take that. It's um one percent marginal. I mean, 
more than it's zero. a question that gets asked of me for strategy games a little bit too yeah. and yeah. strategy games it's not as immediately obvious that someone would have an advantage over someone else like it's all mm -hmm. happening in your brain and you like can't really see what's going on right but like mm -hmm. i got started on chess when i was three i think like i learned oh, wow. chess notation when i learned to read english like at the same oh, wow. time i was learning both of them and okay. i was like at chess clubs growing up and then in high school my thing was playing magic the gathering and i yeah. started playing with my friends but then i got online when i was like 14 or something and i was playing against the mm -hmm. best people in the world already and i started playing poker when i was like 19 or 20 and started playing as the best poker players in the world so i yeah i've been <laughs> i've been doing this for 25 yeah. plus years it's um when people sit down and ask me like how did i do that thing well <laughs> sort of a long answer <laughs> sometimes yeah. how do i get to a point where i can do that thing as well uh, lots and lots and lots of work lots of practice right. lots of study have you ever um you ever read the book the outliers by malcolm gladwell yeah yeah, yeah so i that's enjoy malcolm you're, gladwell yeah yeah you're you're an outlier right like Honestly, you know, if you if you think about it, at three years old, you you learn to speak English and play chess. Like, no matter what, nobody nobody else. I mean, unless that somebody else has been three years old to learn how to play chess, then like nobody else is going to have that type of strategic mental capabilities just from that that you have. So it's like, you know, nobody could be you, right? Like seriously, right. like somebody could be I them, think... but no. Nobody could be you. Often, I think that, like, I think that's true for lots and lots of people. An interesting yeah. thing that you can do is you can think about, is there a collection of things where nobody in the world is better than me at all of them? So you might need to come up with five things. It might be like, well, I'm pretty decent at juggling. I can play an instrument. I'm a good cook. Like, I just cook pasta really well. I'm pretty good at math. I have like a degree in math and I'm I'm really good at this one particular like strategy game or something. Mm. And I think there's no one in the world that's better at all five of those things than me. Mm. And no one in the world being better than you at like anything, that's such a powerful thing. That's so cool. Mm. Like I'm the I'm the best at that specific criteria. And maybe it's not a criteria that matters that much, but maybe you can right. start thinking about how could that matter? What if I like made a game that involved cooking pasta and, and, uh, and math and took some elements from the strategy game I'm really good at? Could I make right. something out of that that was really cool that appealed to other people that no one else could make? Like I'm the only person who can make that. When you start thinking about those things, you can get some really cool inspirations. Yeah. All right, you got me thinking now. Okay, so uh, this past week, I was um, I spoke to the San Francisco 49ers, okay? Uh, so I spoke to, to their team because one, one of their coaches coached me when I was playing. He was like, hey, can you come talk to the guys? So I talked to them all, all over Zoom. And so the coach asked me if there was one thing that I could tell, like if I could tell anybody one thing, what would I tell them to be a great player? And I said, all right, I know exactly what that, that one thing is. I said, just be the best at one thing. Like everybody in history who's ever been like a Hall of Fame or anything has been the absolute best at like one at one thing. Like if you uh, think about um, you know, if you think about accuracy, like uh, honestly, Drew Brees may be the best in the history at accuracy. All right, uh, leadership. Tom Brady may be the best in history at leadership. Um, I'm just trying to think. Just uh. Uh, a, a spin move. I mean, there's a guy named Dwight Freeney who was a you know defensive end. He had the best spin move in history, the best one on the planet. So you actually got me thinking now, like get people to start figuring out what their best thing in the world is, and make something out of that. Mm, that's really good, man. You you actually I, I see why you're actually kind of smart. I, I'll give you that. <laughs> kind of smart. I'll give you Thank that. You. I'll give Thank you that. You. It's a it's a lovely compliment. <laughs> yeah once you have that one thing that you're like really yeah. good at all of a sudden you can go to somebody else and you can say hey i'm really good at this one thing yeah. and you're really good at this other thing and now you and me 
we can put those two things together and now we're together really really good at something even cooler and yeah i i've spent a lot of energy in the past like couple of years trying to work out how i want to run this channel and and whether being the best at a strategy game is like important to me anymore now that i'm sort of like an entertainer and a community leader and something like that and it does take a lot of work to be the best at the best at something for sure Yeah. yeah but i feel like the level that i have reached from pushing myself and i honestly i pushed myself too hard as a as a teenager and in my young 20s i pushed myself too hard to be good at these things i cared too much about whether i won or not and i'm glad that i've like moved on to a more healthy stage in my life i would say but that work that i did put in it's gotten me to the point where i can have a conversation be like yeah i'm really good at this i right I can use that experience to talk to someone else and share things and learn things from them. And yeah, Yeah. if you can do it, it's cool. There's, there's other stuff in life as well, for sure. I wanted to ask you about emotional intelligence versus intellectual intelligence. And Mm -hmm. you talk a lot about like leadership in football and you also talk about how football is like a strategy game. So there's the two elements of it right now. Right now, I think there's so much going on in the world where it's not that hard intellectually to understand it. But something that I think is a challenge for someone who's a strategy gamer, who's very intellectual about things, is how do you like emotionally understand, I have more privilege than someone else, or, or there's this discrimination happening, or there's a pandemic happening and, and all these people are dying. Like it's a number, but so many people are getting sick. Like how how to attach to that. So I was interested if you had any thoughts about things that are emotionally hard to understand just because accepting them is sort of like a hard thing to accept. Right, okay, that's a, that's a really good question. It's making me think. So there were certain guys. So the, the first thing is, is first is you have to know yourself. Like that's number one, okay? So I was a guy and I kind of go back, I, I relate this to football. Like I was a guy when I was playing I could not li- like. Some guys had to listen to freaking rock and roll or some some Lil John, like some crunk music or just super hype stuff. I couldn't do that because it would make my hold on. It would You're make okay. my uh, yeah. It would make my emotions get way too high too early, and then I wouldn't be able to perform like I wanted to. Okay, so you have to know yourself. Some people that that's fine with them, um, but when we're looking at like what's going on in society and like. Uh, you know, like race relations and then the COVID-19 and all that stuff. Like everybody, one of the things that I think is a problem is that everybody has an opinion right now, okay? Everybody has their opinion. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, to their opinion. But not all opinions need to be shared. And I say that because some opinions that I may have or somebody else may have, especially when it's not based on that, like that intellect, the intellectual, it's just concrete information. Like some of those opinions can come out and be sprayed out and cause other people to react emotionally in a way. And then when they react emotionally, then I'm going to react emotionally. And then when I do it, then they'll do it. And it's like this big, just snowball effect that that comes along because everybody is just spewing these opinions about what they think is right. Instead of like literally, like the way to do this is just to just to listen, just to listen, just to listen, and then look at yourself. That's what I tell people: look at yourself and just say, "Okay, here's where here's where where really it really draws a line." Like I can tell a lot about a person, you know, it's anybody about how fast they get angry about something. Okay, like how fast you get angry about something can tell me exactly what to talk about or what not to talk about, like seriously. And so I think just knowing those little cues and just understanding like just to listen to people, like and understanding that even though you have an opinion or I have an opinion, it's not always the right time like to say stuff. Like sometimes the right thing to say is nothing, right? right? And so and so I think we, we, we lose that because everybody has, you know, we have this platform, we have social media, we have everything to where we feel like we need to be heard instead of like, I say this all the time, like it's not always about being heard. It's about people hearing you. 
Like, there's a difference. Like, being heard, I can just shout and scream and all that. And people, you know, I'll be heard, right? But somebody like, I want you to hear me. That means I have to talk to you personally on a one-on-one level. Sure. And I think that's like the, that's one of the keys. It's just these one-on-one conversations where we just listen, right? And then take heed of our emotion. And if it's something that somebody's getting a high emotion, don't say anything. Like, seriously, just don't say anything because you're not going to win. People hate being wrong more than they like being right. Just don't say anything. You won't. You I'll tell you, you won't get anywhere. So that's that's kind of my, my my thing is just being able to check those emotions. Yeah, I yeah, I've tried really hard to be better at listening over the last like ten years because I didn't get that for the first it, more than half of my life. Right, and it's hard to listen yeah, sometimes. Sometimes it yeah. takes a long time to listen. Like you can hear someone say something, but you're not really, like really getting it yet, and so. Right you like have to listen to other people say it too and go seek out more information and after like a few months you're like oh i'm starting to get it <laughs> finally right. if i could have a superpower my superpower would be hearing what someone actually meant the first time they said it mm. that would make life wow. so much <laughs> easier i know right oh my god all right speaking all right superpower hold on you, you just you just trigger something because i always ask okay. everybody i meet this i believe everybody has a superpower and everybody has a kryptonite. Look, everybody has one has, has one of both. All right, what's your superpower if you have one? Anything like what is your super? I mean, I'll, I'll <sighs> game. I'll, other than other than strategy game, right? Like, strategy you can, game. You can't use that. Yeah, can, um, can use that. I think just as you as an individual, my superpower is like keeping cool, having a level mm. head. Um, yeah, like not letting my emotions take over when I'm having one of those conversations we we're just talking about okay okay so it's funny i could probably tell you you're kryptonite it's probably that same thing or close to it uh, sometimes it's been a <laughs> problem for me it. in relationships before like my partner has been like yelling at me and i've just been like very level-headed and then my partner's like why are you not emotional right now <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah it can be can be a downside too yeah yeah okay yeah, so and everybody's got one. All right, chat. Who somebody's got to type in their their superpower in kryptonite? What's everybody's your What's one. your superpower in kryptonite, chat? What's your superpower in kryptonite? Ah, uh, mine. Okay, I have a, a an uncanny ability to make people do what I want them to do. I don't You're know an why. Influencer. Like, yeah, I can get people to do stuff all the time. Like even with Beyond the Game and. I know some of the guys are beyond the game. Some of the other founders and business executives are, are listening right now. And I tell them this all the time. But, like, honestly, I make them do whatever I want to do. And I love it. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and, and, they're like, and you just tell them, apparently. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. No, I'm not, I'm not, you know, manipulative or evil or anything like that. And it's usually what people want to do anyway. I kind of have a good way of figuring out, like, what people really want to do uh, and, and make it align with what I want them to do. So that's my, like, I, I can make people do whatever I want them to do somehow, some way. Um, the other part of it, my, my kryptonite is I'm too freaking agreeable. Like mm. if, if I don't like something and somebody else does, I'll be like, Oh, you know what? I actually kind of like that. Or like, if I really like something and somebody does, and I'm like, yeah, it's not that good. Like I just, it, it bothers me, especially like, again, in my relationships, you know, my marriage or whatever. It's like sometimes she's like, stop agreeing with me. Like, I want you to do what you want to do. Like, not always what I want to do. And I'm, I'm always like, well, I thought that's what women want. Don't you want me to do whatever you want to do? Like, yes, but no. Like, well, I don't understand that. What does that even mean? Yes, but no. Right. But anyway, that's a whole other story. Um, but yeah, I would say just way too, way too agreeable. It's just, you know, it's the, it's the nice guy in me, right? Like, have you, guy, yeah. as a very agreeable person, have you ever being friends with someone who's like quite similar to you but isn't agreeable at all and like so you'll be in a social setting and someone will be like hey you want to like go do this with me and you'll be like oh sure why not and then your friend will be like yeah. you don't want to do that andre like that sounds <laughs> stupid no don't do that go away I, <laughs> like sometimes i've like being friends with people who are not agreeable and i've seen the way they live their lives and it's like oh maybe that could be more fun <laughs> right right yeah you know what so our right, so business partner brian who's uh, one of the co-founders of beyond the game that's why he's the perfect co-founder for me because he's not agreeable at all right sure and i love it um so sometimes he'll tell me uh so we're you know we're i can't remember we're designing something 
and uh, he was like, he and I and I and I and I designed it, and he didn't really like it, and so I was like, yeah, yeah, it's not that good. He was like, dude, if you like it, just tell me. It's okay, right? And I was like, oh, well, I actually do like it. He was like, good, all right, you like it, we'll keep it, right? So, uh, so I actually needed that. Like, you, you know, you always need somebody. It's it feels good to have people like you around you, but it never it doesn't really get us anywhere, you know. Sure. And so having somebody who's like my, you know, the anti me is actually really really good for me. Yeah, I've I often think about games in that way. Games are really cool because the rules are the same for everybody, which means that I can play a game and the game like when I press this button, the game does this thing. And someone who's very different from me, whether they're from a different country or they have a different like emotional um, norm or they're not agreeable or, or whatever, that person can press the same button and the game does the same thing. And so we can have this shared experience together where the game's treating us the same way. And then we go and talk about the game and we think about it in our own heads very differently because we're like different people from different places. And so even if I've played a game for a really long time, I can still like learn something new about it from someone who's completely new to the game just because they're looking right. at it through a different lens. And I think that's super cool. I wanted to ask you about like a streaming in general because um, with... <laughs> I forgot the name of the charity. Goody... Goody Nation. Goody Nation. With Goody Nation... Yeah. Uh, yeah. A big thing that Goody Nation does is it's enabling nonprofits to do things which need to be done. They have a mm -hmm. vision to do something cool, but they're not quite able to do it yet. And I see some in streaming, I see a lot of streamers who succeed come from a lot of privilege. Like almost everybody lives with their parents when they're getting started as a streamer, it seems like, because like you don't make money when you start. So right. people who succeed as streamers, like they just needed to already be coming from something else mm. pretty much and already have been successful in life. And I just, I would love to see more, more diversity in who can succeed as a streamer and more diversity in like who's getting to talk to these audiences and tell their right. story and, and so on and so forth. And I think game is really good at that. But yeah. this, mm. this thing where you build a community and you, you are an influencer of people and stuff, it seems like it, sometimes it's tough. Sometimes yeah. you need to already be the person that they're looking for instead of, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough, man, because, uh, you know, if you just think about just streaming in general, uh, you know, uh, you know, gaming, like, okay, if I go to, if I, if I want to be a good basketball player, like, I can find a court and I can get a ball. I can find a ball, right? Yeah. Like, there's a lot that goes into streaming that just some people just don't have the resources or access to be able to do. And, uh. And that's kind of changing. And I, I was uh, down in Miami um, a couple months ago, down for the Super Bowl, and they're actually building like public uh, streaming and gaming places. So oh. yeah, so it's actually pretty cool. Uh, if, I, if I find information on it, I'll send it over to you. But uh, so yeah, so so it's it's coming along because you got to think, you know, it's it's still the the world of esports and world of you know e gaming and streaming is just it's still really really new, and so still the you got to think like the baby boomers and that generation and even you know millennials and like you know my generation like a lot of them still look at it as just video games and not actually empowering people for success because you know if you think about it you know this these sports is the only is the only you know sport that's not affected by covid you know honestly <laughs> like it's just it's probably thrived or you know even advanced and so when you look at it like that and then when you look at somebody like yourself who's used your analytical mind and your strategic mind to be able to bring a community together through gaming, right? Like, I think more stories like yours that come out, you know, and then more partners like a Goody Nation that kind of helps amplify those stories and helps people get into things. Like, things like that will help advance it. And, you know, it's not going to, obviously, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. But I think that it's it's moving along a lot better now just because, you know, obviously because investments and money is starting to flow flow towards the you know flow towards the space so you know i actually like the direction it's going of course we want it faster we want it more more access for everybody but at the same time it's still um i'm still pretty confident that uh a lot more people will have a lot more chances going you know going forward yeah i hope so i hope that streaming at its best i think is a thing where some viewers 
find someone who they want to listen to and they support that person and that person gets to like play games and chat with them every night and uh and tell their story and just make a cool hangout place and i feel like streaming at its worst is like it starts to move into like the mass entertainment stuff it's no yeah. longer personal money's coming from sponsors um and you you lose out on that like it's almost like a one-to-one -one connection if you're in a stream yeah. with like 50 viewers like i can actually know the name of everybody there pretty much anybody who wants to say hi at least i can remember but then yeah as my channel's grown it's been something i've had to deal with it's like i can't know everybody anymore I, there's only one yeah. of me still yeah right that's a that's a good thing though it really it really is it's like uh you know because every everybody wants to grow and you want to grow and that's just the way that you know human beings are made are made to grow right and and so it's actually a good thing because just because you may not be able to know everybody the more people who know you get to really see you and get to be affected by you even though you may not be that one on one on one but just how you are you know kind of the person that you are the influence that you have it affects a lot of people and you may never talk to a person but still just the way that you carry yourself and the way that you explain things like it affects people. Like I'm sure there's been somebody you had no clue who's having the worst day of their life and hopped on your stream and just because you're how you are, like they just felt better. And you may never know that. And so that's a cool thing. So it's very you know, kind to say. Of, yeah, man. You know, I look at it like a, you know, I don't know. I just I just look at it as a as a good thing. Um growth is always good. You always want to keep your core base and you're always gonna give people access to you because that's just how you are. But even the people that you can't, man, it's still you're doing a lot of good, man, for sure. Yeah. And if I can't have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with everybody on my channel for an hour, something I can do is I can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone like you, and everybody is welcome to hang out and watch. I'll take and so it for sure. That, uh, yeah, trying to have very personal interactions in a way that let anybody who wants to see them see them is something that I've like tried to tried to learn how to do more and more. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, chat's saying so many nice things right now. Oh, look at that. There we go, chat. Keep it, keep it going. And inflate that ego. Go ahead. Do it. <laughs> um, what's your... Do you, like, have a morning routine? What's your, what's your thing to get your day on track to be productive and inspiring in the time of COVID-19 right now? Oh, good. Good question. All right. So, you know, I have a thing... Um, that I have to take the first like hour of a day, like strictly to myself, no outside influence. Like, you know, if it's meditate, if it's pray, if it's do whatever I have to do, whatever, you know, like I have to take that, that time from like my internal self to like, because, you know, even though I don't watch the news or anything like that, you know, or I don't, I don't really get into, you know, what's, you know, I try to separate myself from all this, not separate myself from the stuff that's going on in the world, but try to look at it from the lens that I want to see it in instead of the lens that it's being painted in, you know what I mean? Um, so when I do that, I always take just an hour, at least an hour. Sometimes it's two, like sometimes it's three. Like sometimes I'll le legitimately wake up at 4.30 in the morning and I'll take as much time for myself as I need. Like I, I, I have to, because there's so much just noise out here. and There's so many things going on in the world. And you know, if you, if you watch it too too often, you can think that the world is a pretty messed up place. But if you really take heed of just who you are and kind of get inside yourself, you realize, man, that every evil person was at one point in time some little kid who liked to play on the playground, right? Like every bad person was at one point in time that little kid. So I just look at that and I'm like, man, this world is not a messed up place. People just do messed up things. And nobody wants to, like, nobody when they were a kid grew up was like, oh, I'm just going to be an evil dude. Like, nobody wanted to be evil when they were a kid. And so because of, like, I, I look at things like that, because I take that personal time, you know, whatever, you know, people call it time with God, I call it time with yourself, whatever you want to call it. I could care less what, what people call it. It's just take that time for yourself, man, because there's so many treasures inside your mind. Like, Golly, I told you, you know, after I got done playing, I had money stolen from me and it went through depression. Like the only thing that held me together was the fact that I took that time for myself. Even when I was like freaking out, you know, 
I was like, oh, how things are going to freaking, how things are going to work out in my life. Like, I still had that time for myself. And dude, the best part of you comes out when your back is against the wall. And the only way that you'll actually see that best part of you, if you just, you got to take that time in here. Like, I love the human mind is the most powerful, wonderful thing on the, on the planet. Nothing like it. Like, nothing like it. And I train, I train it even harder than I train my body. Like, seriously. So that's my, that's my daily thing, man. Wake up in the morning early. I'm an early morning type dude anyway. I go inside this thing. I'll stay an hour, two hours, three hours, as long as I need to get my day started. Then I'm good. Sometimes it's 30 minutes. Sometimes it's 10 minutes. Like, it's not, I don't put it like a set, you know, sure. time or anything. But I do give myself time in the morning. Like, I, I have to. That's a, a, a professional NFL player coming on my stream and saying that they have put more time into training their mind than their body is that's such a crazy perspective to have yeah. like but that's the value of it right it's oh yeah yeah yep no way and there's no it's, it's not even possible i played eight years like not possible that i could have made it eight years without without doing that without taking heed of this like dude i had injuries like i had like both knee uh you know knees of a 70 80 year old man at my, at my third or fourth year in the nfl and dude guess what got me past that and got me healed bro it was this like this right here gave me answers of what to do and i did it and it's like i am totally good now and i played five more years after that like when the doctor said i couldn't play i'm telling you your mind is the most powerful thing it'll give you all the answers you need i get excited when i talk about this you know, this brain thing that we have. It's, it's, it's such a wonderful tool yeah. that people don't use. Um, do you have, uh, I'm going to like wind, wind us down. Okay, cool. No, but do you have a, like a, I don't know if you have like a guided meditation online to recommend or if you have a, like a poem that you, like a mantra or a, um, a prayer or, you have something to like leave us with to go yeah. do that ourselves? Absolutely. Abs Absolutely. Um, so one thing that I do, I want everybody out there, I want you to watch this video. It's on YouTube. Um, it's The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. Okay. You got to type it on YouTube. The Strangest Secret. All right. You make sure everybody in the chat gets it. But Earl Nightingale. I'll let everybody get it. Strangest Secret, Earl Nightingale. Okay. So. This is this video right here. It's old. It's from like the '50s. Some old dude uh, changed my life in terms of just what I do is un like I have a goal. Like I have a list of goals. Okay, and this is what I do. So I have this list of goals, and it's probably like a hundred goals of my on my list. And then like you know maybe for like a month or two, I'll pick one out, and I'll write it down, and I'll focus on, and I'll actually like in the mornings. In the mornings when I wake up before I go to sleep, I will picture myself if there's something that I don't have. Like my goal right now is uh, is to pay off my house. Okay, like oh you know I I got a house. I I don't want to live. I want to have debt free. Like no no loan no nothing. So I actually picture it before I go to sleep and at night and when I wake up in the morning, I picture myself having it like I already have it. Like because in your mind you can do anything. So. I picture myself, you know, calling the bank and saying, hey, I'm, I'm you know, I'm paying this thing off today. And, and, and then the, the answering lady is like, wait, hold on, you're paying off that much today? And I'm like, yeah, I'm paying it off today. I'm like, well, okay, I've never had anybody do that. And I'm like, I already have the conversation in my head. Like, so I do those types of things. I see myself having it before I have it, like with anything that I really, really want or where I see myself doing things that I really want to do before I do them. And so, dude, I have so many just, so many stories of stuff like of, of it happening almost like almost just the way I wanted it to or even better like so that's my thing you know I would say everybody watch that video um you know and then take heed of one thing that you want to see yourself doing like and it's got to be kind of realistic like it can't be just oh man tomorrow I want to have a billion dollars like no that, that's not that's not gonna work right <laughs> like it's got to be kind of realistic because it has to be something that you believe can happen um and focus on that thing and picture that thing in your mind play it until it gets so real that not having it seems like so unlikely that as and i do that every day every single day that's how beyond the game was started that's how i made it eight years in the nfl that's how both my knees were healed from like bone on bone degenerative, degenerative arthritis like 
all of that was just picture myself having it before I had it. All right. Cool. Yeah. That's my that's my morning tomorrow. I have to yeah. pick something. Yeah, pick I have something. to pick a it's goal. So it's so fun when you get to check check things off. Like I got a list, like I said, about a hundred things. I've checked off like twenty five of them. It's so fun checking those things off. I'm like, oh, there it goes. Oh, it's the best feeling in the world. That sounds incredible. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This has been very cool. Yeah, you have very cool you have complimented me twice. I have to compliment you. You you are like very charismatic, and the way you can explain things. Um, I like I, you're just a very good communicator and it's very fun to hear you talk about things maybe that's why you're so good at getting people to do what you want them to do i don't know yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't tell anybody else my superpower though because then people start getting on oh yeah no it's a secret yeah, no between you and me between yeah okay, there we go. <laughs> thanks so much thank you so much for joining us um thank you guys and <laughs> you're now, you're now off camera. I don't have a high production value okay, outro right, cool. or anything. But okay, cool. <laughs> thanks. No, that's good. <laughs> thanks for joining me, good, and I'll, no, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'll catch you later. All right. See you, man. Thank you.